<laughs> I want to ask you, like, uh, how do you get a chance to meet Castro, Fidel Castro? How did I get it? meet him? Yes, sir. Well, I was been living in Cuba for about, for about three years, and uh, uh, when when things began to get hot, you know, Batista and uh, Fidel, and Fidel was a, a guerrilla mm. in those days, chasing Batista. And so one one evening coming back from Guantanamo City, which is a adjunct to the to the base, Guantanamo Bay, mm -hmm. I, I was a show patrolman, you know, watching over the young sailors in town. Mm -hmm. uh, they was in there buying that little hooch up and whatever else they can lay down. And on the way back to the base. Uh, the guerrillas stopped the two buses we were on board and from the two buses loads of Navy men I was among that group uh, as a show patrolman show patrol is a black po police officer mm -hmm. uh, so we were taking capture on those two on those two buses and taking them to the mountains close by and, and uh, of course, uh, we were held captive on those on, on the two bases, on the one base, mm. you know, on one guerrilla camp, and given access to free, uh, you know, vino, you know, vino, women, mm. whatever you want, you got it. And uh, I was able to catch. Well, I didn't catch in the United States. They called the claps. So much to speak of. <laughs> anyway, we were treated rawly, mm -hmm. and I was um, among the, at once, of course, Washington got involved, diplomats and all that, and I was the the the, the military end in terms of uh, being part of the State Department entourage that came in, flew, that was flew in to look after us and see our release. Mm -hmm. And I was part of the, the uh, negotiating team mm -hmm. as a journalist. So uh, I was able to, you know, have the delegation from Washington treated like, you know, with respect and everything. And, the one one admonition was don't drink the water, cause uh, if you did, you might end up with the uh, what was that disease they called? I forget now. But anyway, we spent those those two or three days in the mountains mm -hmm. in Cuba, and uh, of course the gates to the base in the Guantanamo City were secured thereafter. And so for the next year or so, we had to stay aboard the base, the Guantanamo Bay, which had all the uh, all the, the goodies of any small you know, community. I used to run the, uh, the television and radio station, plus I would produce the uh, base weekly newspaper. And, uh, we had base house and me and my family, my children, which was a girl and a boy. They went to school on the base. Well, they had every, uh, they had every everything aboard that base in a small American city, in terms of recreation, education, activities. And uh, it was that way. Uh, until I, uh, me and my family left out of there aboard the, uh, aboard the, uh, the Queen Mary. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was trans transporting, uh, you know, American personnel, Navy, from the base. And of course, before we departed that area, 
a little town called Chipiona. A little town called Chipiona, which is about 25, 30 miles, held a bullfight in my honor. Wow. Uh, what they call the Al Cowdy, the mayor. The mayors of different little towns. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why, because I had had a program, military program, uh, that we had, when the ships would come back, shopping back to America, uh, returning to the American side, but they could not take back with them anything that was purchased in those different ports that were, where they stopped in, mm -hmm. in the Atlantic. So I would meet them down, I would meet those ships down at the pier and unload everything they had on, on half on these pickup trucks, on half-ton trucks, mm -hmm. whether it was food, housing material, or whatever, and I would, and candies and that sort of, you know, cheekly, cheekly, and it used to call me Francisco. Mm -hmm. I was the Negrito, you know, the Black Santa, and uh, I would go to those churches in the area within the 30 miles, and I would meet with the, uh, the they called it, I would meet with the mayor of the community and the priest and and have a ceremony that donating these loads of materials to them and move on. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was quite impressive for those, those people. They appreciated that, you know. Uh, and so they had this bullfight in my honor. It must have been a bull if I didn't hold no more than about two or three thousand, but it was loaded up with people. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, Jaime, and Jaime J James, Jaime Francisco, Jim French, mm -hmm. and my family, we were presented, you know, the, the ears and the tail, which is a honor, you know, caught a few Americans. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it was quite an honor, uh, this little small town, Chipiona, San Luca. <laughs> My mind still uh, can go back and, re and remember mm -hmm. uh, all those events that, that took place. Uh, it was the one thing that I d deeply remember that I, I had a Thunderbird I took over there. And somehow, maybe about a month before I departed, I was going to ship it back to America. Mm -hmm. But it had some me mechanical problems. So I brought it to the same little town, Chipiona, and had the local mechanic to look it over and repair the car. Mm -hmm. And I went back two days later, and they had pulled the engine out and had it hanging up. As if that was the reason why the car didn't function properly. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> and so, but that wasn't the problem. And so they put my engine back in, and the problem was the brakes was frozen up. That was the only thing. Mm. And they, they want to charge me, and I said, well, I spoke with the, <laughs> I spoke with the Al Carter at that time, the mayor. He took care of that matter fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, that's that's how I got to Cuba. <laughs> <to that time. laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, but I that just one of many experiences that uh, you know I instituted an annual festival that takes place in May that opens up the base to all the Cubans outside the base. Mm. And uh, it's an annual event, but it's the only time that they can come aboard the base. Mm -hmm. And so we will have a tremendous fiesta uh, activity with Americans. And it, it, it continues to this day. Wow, so then you started still to continue? Yeah, to this very day. Wow. Uh, quite an achievement for me 
not that it's for me or just something mm -hmm. that's part of what I do. Mm -hmm. So, but other than that, I, I just a piece of it. I learned pretty much to speak the language, not fluently, mm -hmm. but enough to go out there and BS my way through what, what I want to get done. <laughs> mm. Did you actually smoke a cigar with Castro too? Yeah, um, no, I didn't smoke no cigar, but uh, I didn't smoke then and don't smoke now. Do you actually met him and talk to him? Yeah, we met. I interviewed him. The story that I did, it appeared uh, that week in, 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 a, in, a, in a weekly newspaper called, the, I think I forgot what call it. It was called Americana. Mm -hmm. But it was, a, this, the article was in English as opposed to the other newspaper, the other part of the publication was in, in the language mm -hmm. of the country. Yeah, I guess so. And I got a, quite a following of people commentary about who this crazy ass uh, be. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I would give them the American view of mm -hmm. our, our, our presence. I, I produced a, 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 a publication uh, that was given to anyone that's checking into the base will get a copy of it for mm -hmm. information so you knew how to go out in town <coughs> how to conduct yourself mm -hmm. it was very popular <coughs> mm. well, just some of the things that's cool. What, what was your thoughts about somebody like Castro and the revolution that happened over there? Were you did you agree with some of their views, or what did you think about? Them? Well, yeah. I, I didn't. I, su I supported. You know, I supported what Castro was trying to do. The people, mm -hmm. the people just just catching hell, and Batista, you know, just didn't care who they chopped down, chop up, mm -hmm. uh, for no good reason, in my opinion, at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so when he be, when he became when they finally got rid of of that uh, the ideology that they had, cause not much has changed, mm -hmm. you know, with Castro. Uh, not much has changed. So, but it was a worthwhile adventure for me. Mm. Did you get a chance to meet uh, Che Guevara by any chance? No, uh, mm -hmm. he was a, at that time they hadn't they hadn't captured him at that time. Okay. But uh, he was uh, the spirit behind the revolution, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And what year when y'all got caught by the Cubans? What year was that? In Cuba. When you was over in Cuba, yes, sir. Uh, must have been around 59. Yeah, when they had the revolution around that time? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 59. I had my family there. Mm-hmm. They went to school on the base. Mm 